Hey! Let's gonna make a salad after this. Contains apples and tomatoes and some uh, pumpkin seeds and some almonds and I was holding an apple a few videos ago about a week ago and a bunch of people told me how horrible it is that I would be eating a salad and how unhealthy that is for me. <laughs> That's so funny. I could uh, be drinking water and someone would say, oh my god, that stuff's so unhealthy. You shouldn't be drinking water. Yeah, I know I'm out of shape, obviously. It's blatantly obvious, but I kind of find it funny that uh, people will say stuff like that. Just uh, It's like, oh, water's bad and salads are bad now. Yeah, you shouldn't be eating that. You should just be eating steaks. <laughs> I like a good steak, but if I were to eat steak for like four days in a row, I, I think I might die. I can't, I can't eat that many steaks. It's just, it's not good for you either. Anyway. Actually, it makes me feel really bad. Um, I don't even need this iPad for this. I only ever have a few lines on here to make reference to. And of course, I'm never one to confuse, them, to confuse a religion with metaphysics. And I don't ever touch religion. Certain metaphysics actually evolve Technically, the word is de-evolve into religion. Religion, of course, is secularized metaphysics. Buddhism has become um, what the Christians would call um, the Pharisees. I don't know if you've been familiar with the Pharisees in the Bible. These people that were outwardly very austere, you know, looked very pious. Oh, Maria Patria Infilis. You know, not that they chanted that stuff. It's a Catholic chant, of course. Um, but were inwardly extremely impure. And of course, if you remove the transcendent principle, i.e. the soul, then definitionally something is extremely low and morality-based. In other words, it's about leading a clean life. Not that I'm against the leading a clean life, you know, just uh, like thinking happy thoughts and blanking out in your mind. And that must definitionally, of course, become the highest but the question is who works for whose own good and when you say who then the materialist and the soul denying uh, nihilist thinks it is a reference to the psychophysical persona non grata by the way i came up with a pretty good analogy and uh, people were asking me in live stream for weeks and it just spontaneously came to me it's not a perfect analogy but it's nearly perfect, it's talking about uh, past life uh, memory. It's like, where does it come from? Conventional memory is, of course, in the psychophysical consciousness, which, of course, goes no further than uh, death. You know, life, of course, is the consubstantiality of matter and spirit. And when the two are broken up, you know, go their separate ways, um, then conventional memory is lost, like, you know, what you had for dinner yesterday, so on and so forth. The best analogy you can come up with in past life recollection is not some sort of obtuse religious stuff. Um, it's uh, highly sensible. It's no different than a hard drive. bit of an expert on hard drives. I've made a lot of videos on hard drives and even written an Apple on Apple's website on hard drives. And uh, there's a table of contents. When you go to like format a hard drive, it doesn't actually erase the data off of there. There are certain programs that will physically erase the data off there. It will overwrite everything on the entire platters. But a conventional formatting doesn't do anything at all. All the data is still present. What it has done, it has wiped the table of contents. The table of contents would be uh, synonymous with uh, the breakup of the psychophysical body and that of the spirit, of course. So when the table of contents is erased, all the data is still present on the actual hard drive, but that is inaccessible from conventional existential psychophysical consciousness, which has its locus in, of course, and of the physical body, i.e. life, conventional memory, but it is still present there to read as uh, anybody that knows anything about hard drives can actually tell you. So that's kind of a really good analogy. Um, but the question is, who works for whose own good? Or as in Udana 81, if there were no unformed, unmade, unoriginated, 
then there would be no escape for the form, the made, the originated, the born, so on and so forth. We have to ask ourselves the question, who works for whose own good? Obviously, existential purity, well, it's good for life. And it's like, well, he's a clean person. He works out ten times a day, and, you know, he's so happy. Every, all the neighbors like him. He seems like such a jolly fellow. He has a wife and two kids, and he leads a very sensible, clean life. Of course, everybody we know in real life that looks like that superficially has all the uh, skeletons in their closet and all the bad stuff in the basement. <laughs> They're only that way superficially, 99 times out of 100. But uh, this idea of removal, of, which of course cannot be done, this idea of a soul-denying nihilist, i.e. materialist, which by the way is what 99%, it's not my opinion, it's a fact, 99% of modern Buddhists are, and I'm not picking on the Buddhists at all in this video. I'm only using them as a reference since I'm an expert on them and I've had to deal with them, debate with them for decades. Now, th there's this belief that the only thing you could do is make this life better. This, of course, is the Sasadavada heresy, which is literally translated as perpetualism. We would actually call this uh, the position of Kamayana, or the path of action and agency ship. But no action or agency does anything for anything other than the psychophysical being during this life. It doesn't go any further than that. You know, you know, one is not an agent or an action, action doer within sansara. So, like uh, polishing your car, keeping your car clean, you know, you keep your car in good working order and give it regular oil changes, not for the sake of it being pretty, which of course is what, like some mega expensive car that's never driven, you know, they, they're always going over it with a fine toothbrush and it's kept in a museum, it's never driven, it doesn't even have gasoline in it, but it's in perfect working order, but you don't do it, it's like, oh, look at that, it's so beautiful. It's like, well, that's nice. It's only going to last that way for so long. I mean, maybe a few hundred years in a museum. Remember those uh, museum quality Corvettes that's actually in Kentucky? It was in a Corvette museum. It's just beautiful. They're never driven. There's no gasoline in the tank. And little did they know there was a huge, uh, huge sinkhole underneath them. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, this huge sinkhole opened up and swallowed up like a dozen of these mega million dollar cars and they're basically trashed and they're turned to garbage so this is what people do that are soul denying nihilists they actually don't strike nobody goes looking for something that they think they already have or something that they already know and nobody actually strives for disobjectification i.e. the fulfillment or perfection of wisdom through disobjectification they don't believe that there is anything to disobjectify from the psychophysical and that of course it's not only not metaphysics, it's not even religion. It is moralism. Moralism is all well and fine if you actually lead a whole, and whole, wholesome and clean life. But who works for whose own good? You know, there's an old saying that you can't polish a turd. And I know people will make reference to the Mythbusters where they actually compact, you know, uh, uh, you know, animal poo and, you know, super dry animal, you know, polish it. You know, that's taking it too literally, of course. You can't polish a turd, and certainly not so in uh, the sense of uh, what metaphysics is all about. And since it's not the path of action and agency ship, since the soul is not an agent in or of sansara, then what would it be? I find it odd, and it is extremely telling, that it is the path that so many people are comp completely confused when you actually talk about retroductive methodology. It's like, well, I don't understand retroduction. I don't understand uh, platonic recollection, which is not literal recollection. It is recollecting something that has been scattered. The reason why somebody is scattered is they identify with that thing in the mirror. It's the reason why the most um, uh, repeated passage in the ancient Nikaeas are isokaya. Namisata, the body, i.e. the psychophysical, is not the soul. You can't say my soul, since that, of course, implies one thing has another. I don't even need this uh, silly iPad to talk about this. This is a really simple subject, but it confuses everybody. People always ask the question, you know, what happens when we die? And I ask the question, which is the answer to their question, what makes you think you are that which dies? You know, it's incredibly sensible. I mean, do you think that there's a signal in this radio? I mean, it's... I came up with this analogy for metaphysics. It makes things abundantly clear if somebody actually spends five seconds thinking about it and they have more than five brain cells. 
call it the radio analogy. It's not a perfect analogy, but it's way better than any other analogy that anybody else has ever come up with all throughout history. It's not perfect, but it's about 99% perfect, which is about 40% better and a more perfect analogy than anything anybody else has ever come up with. There's a modulation of 162.400 megahertz. That's a transverse modulation of the coaxial circuit of light. There's no radio on Earth that can tune a signal that doesn't have a modulation that is tunable. Something has a Hertzian modulation. It would be a perturbation whereby which it is tuned. I ask you this, and it seems like such a facetious question. I mean, is there a signal in the radio? There is no signal in the radio. And the signal is not to be confused with the broadcast. The broadcast is analogous to consubstantiality of consciousness. Because the signal is everywhere and nowhere. There's nobody on this earth. You could point to the transmission station, which is where you can't take the analogy too far. But there's nobody. And it's like, well, it's everywhere in this room. It's, well, it's outside of this room and outside of this house and here and there and everywhere else. And, of course, uh, signal attenuation uh, due to being too far off distance since it's a uh, VHF signal. You know, only goes so far where, once again, is taking the radio analogy too far. But nobody on this earth could actually point to the signal. And certainly not in this radio. And if I smash the radio and I grab another radio just like it, I can tune in the exact same frequency. Yes. People say, is there one soul or is there many souls? Well, that's an interesting question. What is individuation? Have you ever taken a bubble bath? I haven't had a bubble bath in like 30 years. Um, I'm a guy, right? <laughs> I love baths, but you ever seen a single light reflected in a million soap bubbles? Like, well, there's a million little images of that light. But I know it's just one light, yet each one is individuated. This one is here. There's a bubble. This is made out of lead, by the way, but it's still a bubble, right? It's here. Here's one over here, and there's one over here. They're both uh, representing the same light. Yeah, but this is a larger bubble, and it is over here. And this is a smaller bubble, and it's over here. So we have different spatio-temporal coordinates. A larger bubble will actually will show a larger image of that reflected light in the bathtub. I made that observation basically like 25 years ago. A larger bubble, of course, will show a larger image of light. This one might be a newer bubble, like if you go to fan the, uh, the fluid in the bathtub, you know, the bubble solution. Ah, God, I'm not, I need to take a bubble bath again. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> you know, it might appear much later than this bubble. So people don't ask the right questions. They say, well, do we all have one soul? Do we have different souls? All frequencies, whether it be uh, 1 hertz up to 50 gigahertz, and whether it be gamma radiation, which is also, too, EMF, uh, electromagnetic radiation, electromagnetic frequency, uh, 50 hertz, uh, AM, FM, uh, gamma ray, X-ray, visible light, it's all one thing. It is all a coaxial circuit, only differentiated by the frequency of the modulation. Visible light, gamma radiation, radio, this uh, frequency that is tuned in by this radio, doesn't take the signal into it, does it? There's no signal in the radio. I could smash this radio. No one would stupidly think that I've done anything to the signal, would they? Where's the signal at? There's not a single person on Earth that could point to it. They could tell me where the broadcast station is, but that's going too far. Yeah, That's a physical Cartesian location of a broadcast station. Yes, as far as the true metaphysical analogy of the signal or the broadcast station, it would have no Cartesian locus. It wouldn't have a place or a topos in space and time where you could point, there it is, there's a broadcast station it's right over there. <laughs> Just think about that for a second. I mean, have you ever, do it, think about it when you're sitting on the toilet. Think about it when you're taking a shower, which is where people get inspired. There's no signal in this radio. What about the frequency modulation since light and gamma and radio and visible light, on and on? It's all the exact same stuff. Even every branch of science agrees with that. 
It's all electromagnetic radiation. Yet they have radically different properties. Gamma radiation is not to be confused with visible light, nor is it to be confused with radio. But it's all the same stuff, right? Why, how are they indifferentiate? How are they separate? Like, well, this is gamma radiation. It's deadly. It's the uh, most uh, potent form of radiation. Yep. Over here we got visible light, which we all think we know what that is. Well, we, know we can see with it, but people still don't know what light is, unfortunately. Light's not a particle. Light's not a wave. Light's not an emission. Light doesn't have a speed. Light's not a photon. It's not a duality. It's not all those things. Yet, every branch of modern science actually thinks that. They do. It's not my opinion. That's a fact. Since these are all one singular essence, once again, I said, is there many soul or is there one soul? I don't know. I mean, everything from one hertz all the way up to a hard light, the fundamental particle, which is just super high energy light, you know, have a million different attributes. Radio has completely different attributes than visible light radiation versus gamma radiation. But it's all the exact same stuff. So, when you're asking the question, is, and I hear that question all the time, and it's the second most asked question after, you know, what happens when we die. The second most asked question, well, is there one soul or many souls? Well, I mean, is there one essence of electromagnetic radiation or are there two? There's only one. Well, what's the difference? They're all exactly the same, save for an attribute, an attributional state, which is its frequency. And frequency is directly correlational to capacitance. The smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. There's no signal in this radio. There's no soul in the body, but that's not a denial of the soul, is it? Have you ever thought in your life, is there a signal in it? Maybe as a child you did. Maybe a lot of adults still ignorantly think that. There's a signal in my radio. Is there? Highs in the lower 80s. Is there? There's no signal in your radio. There's no soul inside the body. But who works for whose own good? What would be the basis of transcendence? You know, if I kept this ba this uh, radio in perfect working shape and dusted and kept this battery charged and took really good care of it, of course, eventually it'd still fall apart since it's electronics. But, I mean, this is morality. This is superficial karmavada, kamayana. Nearly perfect analogy, the radio analogy is. 99% perfect. Maybe 98% perfect. There is nothing nor any purity in here, nor is there liberation in this of this well i took care of this radio i've been using it for 30 years i keep it out of humidity and i keep the battery charged. Well, who cares anything you do to this radio you're not effectuating the modulation of the signal the modulation of the signal is analogous to the primordial agnosis which drives embodiment which drives suffering which drives false identity this is what people don't get. There is no action, nothing you could do to this radio that will have a damn thing to do with the transcendence of the signal, such that the signal never is able again to be tuned by any other radio. Once this radio falls apart, break it, smash it, you know, gets rusty and craps out, then any other radio could tune that signal. Modulation is gone. No radio can tune a signal without modulation. It's not a signal at all by definition. It is just pure energy with no Cartesian value. Think about that for a second. Who works for whose own good? You can do nothing to this body that will have any effectuation upon transcendence, liberation, wisdom, on and on and on and on. That's what I've been telling these Buddhists <laughs> for decades now, and they still don't get it. I made it abundantly clear, lucid, and they still don't get it. Well, there is no soul. There's no soul in the body. See, so you agree with me. No, I said there's no soul in the body. I didn't say there was no soul. You know, there's uh, no flamingos in Alaska. I'm not saying flamingos don't exist. I say they don't, uh, do, you know, they don't dwell up there. 99% certain that they don't flamingos. 
There is no soul in the body. There's no signal in the radio. There is nothing that you can do with or about this radio to effectuate the transcendence of the signal and the removal of modulation, which be analogous to primordial agnosis. Once again, who works for whose own good? That is morality. That is superficial piety. That is believing that you're an action, uh, excuse me, you're a, uh, a doer or a karman. Uh, you have agency ship with and to this radio, which would be analogous to the psychophysical body, of course. You can't purify consciousness. It goes no further than the psychophysical. If the ancient masters of the ancient world, the true masters of wisdom, if they're able to come forward in time to today, and you told them about what a radio is and how a radio works, they would be in 1,000% full agreement and clapping um, for me over my radio analogy because there's not another better one in this world. It's not perfect, but it is about 98% perfect. And it makes things simple to explain to people because metaphysics is really simple, but people have never thought like that. Their brains are not on that uh, gear level. It's like people have never gone out of second gear. It's like they have no idea what's in third gear. It's kind of like back in the day before we broke the sound barrier. People thought like, oh my God, you know, you're going to slip into another dimension if you break the sound barrier. Or bad things will happen. Human beings can't do it. And of course we did. And you know, now psh, aircraft, uh, advanced uh, military aircraft are going, what, Mach 4 plus, Mach 5 plus? People just never enter into that phase of thinking. Nature is really simple. Yeah, it is not complicated at all. Understanding it is also not complicated. What's complicated is the fact that people have never stuck their mind in the third gear, if you will. They just, they can't, can, what? Third gear? Never heard of that. See, it's right there on, this, on your stick shift right there. It's third gear. You've only ever been in, in reverse, neutral, first and second. Yeah, that's all there is. Like, no, it says right there. It's third gear. You've never been there. Oh, I don't know how to do that. And it's only there. It's really simple. <laughs> Mother Nature is a hairy armpit chick with muddy feet. The actual methodology of disobjectification, i.e. theurgy, is actually quite simple. I state it blame, uh, blatantly and obviously, give simple analogies that anybody with five brain cells could understand, like the radio analogy, but some of you last don't all get it. Just think about it. Did you think about it? No, I didn't think about it. I listened to what you said in the video. It's like, well, that's well and fine, but you need to make it yours. In other words, think about it a second while you're sitting on the toilet or taking a shower, you know, doing something superfluous, you know, that you can do with your brain turned off and you can engage your brain into third gear. Like, oh, I get it now. It's really, really simple. I've had more than a few people, quite a few people actually, the years contact me. Say, oh, I finally got it. I get how to do disobjectification. Wonderful. Everything is so blatantly clear. Like, wonderful. Anyway, hope you like this video. Hope it made things simple. Yeah. The humidity in here is terrible. It's been like super dry out west, but it is hideously humid here in Kentucky. I don't like humidity. I'm not a big fan of it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.